As always, I look forward to giving you introductions to good companies that also have the potential of being good stocks. Today, I get to introduce and discuss some of the rewards and the risks of investing in Docebo. And this stock is a big boy for this channel, trading on both the TSX in Canada and the NASDAQ in the United States. And what does Docebo do? Unlock the limitless power of learning. They claim to have the world's best learning platform. Enterprises can sign up to book a demo and try their product. Deliver training to any audience anywhere, all while driving tangible business results. Yes, Docebo is a learning management system company, LMS, trying to fit right into this massive tech stack that enterprise companies need. Docebo is a Canadian company. However, they get about 76% of their revenue from North America, including the United States and 24% from the rest of the world. And impressive for a Canadian company with $200 million of revenue, some massive companies using their services, including the very popular Chipotle. And we'll look at the numbers in more detail in a second, but this is really their pitch to investors. 94% of their revenue is from subscriptions. That is growing at 42% CAGR. And right now they have an annual recurring revenue of 206 million USD. And this is their growth strategy because despite having that really nice high recurring revenue, you still need growth to feed into that recurring revenue. If they can get that, it's a really attractive stock. But before we look at the numbers and their growth, the company has this disclaimer they would like you to read. And of course, my disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm definitely not your financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I'm just introducing you to this company to go continue your research as I will as well. Fantastic chart showing the non-recurring revenue in orange and the recurring revenue in blue. And you can see with sticky companies that get customers Customers buying their product over and over again. Any measurable growth in this non recurring orange revenue really stacks up quickly to their total revenue, which was US 194 million in 2023. They're saying that that is growing by 42% if you look at the numbers between fiscal 2020 and fiscal 2023. Now, I will say with SaaS stocks, you really want to try to apply the rule of 40, where you're adding up the revenue growth rate and the EBITDA margin rate. And for the best company, you want to see that above 40 percent. Docebo has seen 42 percent growth during this time frame so that would be their top line growth. However for a long period of that time they were not profitable right. Operating income negative 8 million, negative 5 million, negative 12 million. Their expenses were higher than their revenue for a long time so that is hard to measure. They are now just recently in the past four quarters EBITDA positive and growing EBITDA from 1 million to 4 million to 5 million per quarter. So right now I have them at 23% revenue growth and an EBITDA margin of 9%, which gives them 32% rule of 40. They need a little bit of work, but there are still some things to like that may suggest that will improve over time. 104% net dollar retention rate. They are four timing their average contract size, meaning they are getting more money from less companies, 81% represented by customers with multi-year contracts and growing number of customers. So larger customers with more money coming back more often. Can that EBITDA margin improve? Can their revenue continue to grow? Currently a market cap of $1.8 billion Canadian. They only have 30 million shares, which is possibly why this is such a sticky company, which is increasing slowly over time after a large drop after COVID. We're used to seeing this, right? Everybody gets excited. They were talking about AI. This was kind of an AI stock kind of. Share price was super high. It crashed down massively in 2022. And now we've seen this nice slow recovery as the company improves their top line, improves their earnings and improves their free cash flow, including some insider buying and some buybacks in 2024. So again, for me, that's a lot to like. 200 million in revenue growing at over 20%, 14.5 million in EBITDA. Earnings per share fully diluted at 53 cents. They have cash, look at this, $82 million in cash, no debt. They're getting more cash. They have a very, very, very low float with insider and institutional ownership and some valuation over here. Yeah, it's high. I could see why people are paying for this company. At the end of the day, this is another one. Revenue trending up, yes, I would like it to be a little bit higher. Earnings trending up, yes, I would like better EBITDA margins to get up over the rule of 40. Cash trending up, yes, what are they going to do with that cash? That is a pile of cash that they need to put somewhere. Roic 
Trending up, yes. Valuation trending up, yes, slowly. This is not a snapshot in time. I do look at it and think it might be a little bit overvalued, but again, that's the historical trend. We're trying to predict the future. Where is this company going to go? What do you think of Docebo? Let me know. And to continue researching great stocks like this, I have a paid Patreon. I will link to that down below. As always, thank you for your time. You've been watching Common Sense Investing.